Federated Mission Networking is important for the Connected Forces Initiative. It allows for military operations to share data and actually create a military secure internet uh, in any environment we want to operate. So it's just come through, there's a vehicle borne IED suspected. Okay, where's the grid? Roger, I'll take that up. The lessons I think that we learned in the Afghanistan Mission Network experience in ISAF uh, prove that when a federation is established and willing uh, nations are able to make information available to their commanders and share information, that the decisions that are being made are much more powerful, uh, much more effective in achieving the operational mission objective. The time in Afghanistan has been very revealing to us. We entered Afghanistan in, in sort of 2006 uh, with the ARC, uh, where we very much did virtually all our, our business over our national systems. Uh, and what we were finding was actually we weren't being able to exploit information across the coalition uh, in the way we would want to. And then, uh, as a result, got into uh, what was originally the ISAF Mission Secret Network and then became uh, uh, the Afghan Mission Network. And from doing that, what we've realised is actually it's very empowering for our junior commanders to have access to coalition-wide information rather than just UK information. Uh, and that allowed them to make better decisions uh, far more quickly uh, and have a uh, situational understanding of their environment uh, to a far greater depth than they'd had before. You can do everything from this desk when an incident happens and I then have to create a storyboard and it obviously gives me live mapping uh, or it gives me mapping, it gives me imagery which we can then actually create the story around and as with everything a picture paints a thousand words so when we're saying you know a rocket lands here and it impacted there or it took off there we can actually paint the picture on the storyboard and for people that you're then briefing it just brings it all to life. The role of NATO Communications and Information Agency for FMN is uh, basically that we are the organization that builds the technical element of Federated Mission Networking. It is built around innovation. Uh, we are helping not only NATO but also the nations to develop new, this new concept and link national networks and NATO networks in a federated environment for missions that we don't know yet. So we will always have to innovate in order to have the best solution at that time. We are seeking now to deliver a series of building blocks. And in the, uh, the tech world, we call that the service-oriented architecture. So that operational commanders, in defining what information services they need, can choose from a sort of warehouse uh, of available services and configure those services to meet the particular demands of the geophysical environment, uh, the mission, the threat that they are facing. Uh, so by having a ready-made set of policies, procedures, and even components uh, sitting there ready to go, uh, it really speeds up the time that uh, commanders are able to respond and have a functioning command and control network in place. The U.S. and NATO both started FMN initiatives at about the same time, a little more than two years ago. Uh, neither one of us liked the name, so the U.S. changed its name to Mission Partner Environment a little bit earlier than NATO, but NATO now with Federated Mission Networking is also a better name. So uh, we continue, the main U.S. goal continues to be alignment with FMN, uh, and I would like uh, just to assure any nations, because I get a lot of questions on, well, do we, do we focus on USMP or we focus on NATO FMN? The answer is doesn't matter because they will be the same. If a nation can federate with either one, they'll be able to federate with both. So that's an important uh, thing to remind the nations. Uh, and the U.S. is extremely interested in leveraging the 72 nations and organizations that NATO has relationships with. Being on a single net for NATO and the nations allows nations to apply more and more the NATO first policy. That means that they can use NATO solutions on the national environment. And as this will be you know, some kind of a military cloud environment, they can basically not only share data in federated mission networking, but also applications. And that will increase interoperability in NATO significantly. 
we uh, are surrounded by, by neighbors uh, uh, who we have uh, tight cooperation with, like Finland and Norway, where some are, are EU members, others are, are NATO members. But we have one thing in common, and that, that's that we share the NATO standards. So, so this will bring us tighter into the Nordic cooperation as well uh, in, the, uh, in the context of, of regional security uh, issues. What we need to do, especially for the CS field, we separate the, the CIS, the services and the, the, the CIS domain from the hierarchical military domain. So in the past, you know, had a division, a national one, you had the division headed CIS, and then you had a core, and the core had its own CIS. Now you have the military hierarchical structures, but over the whole structure, it's covered with a federated network to allow the information sharing. Putting the coherent management structures uh, and governance structures in place in order that we do uh, uh, go forward under coherent banner in order that when we do go on operations we can uh, we can interoperate from from day zero I think that's the biggest problem I think we we've learned a lot from uh, the Kiav and the Afghan mission network steering group and and I'm pleased to see that that's you know folding into the future mission network approach uh, that NATO are, are, are pressing ahead with and so I think yeah that's the key bit to me the technology I think we can all make work uh, um, it's actually making sure that we're all pulling in the same direction with a common set of standards and a, and a common approach. This is not just a single capability, it is an ability expressed in terms of technical standards, profiles, processes, uh, capabilities that need to be developed so that should we need to support a mission in the future, um, the nations and NATO are able to create this capability quite quickly. People feel that after General McChrystal in 2009, that this is a next defining moment where we should keep what we learned and built in Afghanistan and should keep it for the future. And that's happening right now. So I'm, I'm really amazed to be part of this in this moment. So what are the key steps towards federated mission networking? Um, you know, we say networking and networking is not a technology environment, it is a human activity. Uh, the technology, the work that my agency does, is supportive to, de to develop this uh, network. That is what I like about the concept, uh, the human, the soldier is central.